First things first, we undo the drive shaft or dummy shaft nut. Sometimes I have a keyway instead of a split pin. 36mm socket. Then we can jack the car up. 21mm socket for the wheel nuts. We undo the caliper with an 18mm socket. Jolly tight on this one. I've uh, tied the caliper up to the chassis with a piece of farmer's string just to save the uh, flexible pipe. Then you will need a Torx 50 bit, at least 55mm long uh, because it has to go down the holes in the hub. Now the nuts are out, uh, the dummy shaft or drive shaft is uh, loose. Uh, we can't resort to some of the normal tricks because the uh, disc is mounted on the inside. So if it doesn't come off by whacking it with a copper hammer, we've got problems. We've got problems. One of our first options is to put the wheel back on the wrong way round and hit the wheel with a big hammer. I've got a big paper hammer. Now having repeatedly hit the wheel, I can look in there and see that there is a small gap between the uh, bearing and the housing. So I'm going to try opening it up with an air chisel. It's moving now. Now we separate the disc from the hub with a 13mm socket. We turn the disc a few degrees and lift it off the assembly. Now the hub needs pressing off the bearing. Now this is the way I'm going to set it in the press. I've got three equal sized bolts the heads of which will sit on the press bed and I will use a suitable mandrel <laughs> or socket to press the uh, hub out of the bearing. Now this is tight. I would say good luck doing this with a hammer. Uh, if you don't have a press but you do have a log splitter you can sometimes adapt a log splitter for dual purpose. There, the upper part is free now. Next problem we have is to get the uh, lower race off the hub. Getting the inner race off, well you can either bugger about for hours on end with uh, bearing pullers. I have occasionally uh, welded a bit on just so that I can fix a puller onto it. But the normal procedure is just to grind the race away until it's nearly through and then finish off with a chisel. Refitting is more or less a reversal of the procedure but do remember to clean up the mating surfaces first including any paint that you might have put on when you uh, removed the bearing. New bolts of course. And talk and talked up. Then, if we pop something through the hole, it holds the discs while we torque the disc nuts up. Using a new drive shaft nut, we put the thing on finger tight and spin the bearing a few times. 
It gets a little bit more complicated now, uh, talking up uh, that uh, drive shaft nut. We spin the wheel a few times, five it says in the manual, and then we torque it down to the first torque setting which I think is 185 pounds. I'll give all the torque settings at the end. Now this torque setting of the uh, wheel nuts really is rather important. Uh, if you want your bearings to last. So now we jack it up again, spin the wheel a few more times again five times it says in the manual and torque it to its final setting of 310 pounds Now 310 pounds is tight. Then we put the uh, castle protector on and the split pin and uh, jack it up, spin it a few more times and away we go. These torque settings really are uh, quite important nowadays especially with the stretch bolts and single use bolts and such things. Uh, I'm actually doing a video about uh, torque wrench calibration if anybody's interested.